This is Nathan Hensel. You're listening to the Tro and Quiz Show. Fuck you, Braden. Let me back in. And welcome to the week two version of the Tro and Quiz Show. As always, I'm your boy Joe Tro with my partner, T Quiz. What's going on, T Quiz? Good to be back for another week of fantasy football. Yes, sir. And week two, week one is in the books. It is done. And week two is in front of us now, looking to a Thursday night matchup. And uh, a couple things went down on uh, Monday night. After that Monday night game, we got two big trades between three teams, me, Taylor, and Garrett Tysinger. And it just happens to be that on the Travato Electric hotline right now, we got Tysinger's boys head coach, Garrett Tysinger. Garrett, you got me? Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Joe. Oh, man, it's so great. t why don't you uh, start off the questions? So, Garrett, after uh, your week one performance of scoring 66 points, what went through your mind and uh, what did you do to adjust? Well, I thought about killing myself, to be honest. (laughs) 60 points is pretty fucking bad. But uh, I knew I had to make some moves. Um, I needed depth on my roster, especially my bench. Um, I didn't feel like my starters were too terrible, but uh, my bench was really lacking some, some talent. Interesting. So... What did you do in these trades that you really liked? Um, so the trades, you know, I think it kind of sucks to get rid of uh, James Conner and Aaron Jones in a way. But um, I like the depth I got from the wide receiver position, you know, getting Marquise Brown. Um, he had a great game last week. Obviously, he was a first-round pick for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I also got Cooks, Hardman and Michael Gallup, and uh, I feel like I got some good value for uh, what I traded away. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to recap the trades real quick in case people aren't aware. But uh, so two trades went down at a very late at night, around 1130 at night last night on Monday night. And uh, the first trade was me and Garrett. I traded away Joe Mixon and Marquise Brown. Garrett sent over Aaron Jones and Gus Edwards. And then right after that, nine minutes later, I didn't even know Taylor was uh, was negotiating. I don't think Taylor knew I was negotiating. Taylor gives away David Montgomery, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup, and Nicole Hardman, and Garrett uh, sends over James Conner, Jalen Rashard, Rob Gronkowski, and Cooper Cup. So uh, Garrett gets six new people, sends away six people, and I think it definitely makes your team better, Garrett. Is that how you feel? Is that how you feel at the end of the day? Yeah, I honestly feel like my team got much better. Like I said, the depth is uh, definitely going to help and I really like I feel like I kind of got equal return not equal return but like I feel like my team honestly got like way better because um Aaron Jones was in a uh he's in a pass first offense and I wasn't really crazy about him when I drafted him anyway but he was the best player available so and to get back to Joe Mixon in return I understand that you know he uh he got banged up last week or the Sunday so um he could possibly be out on Sunday but that's okay um and I also feel like, you know, getting rid of James Conner sucks too, but, you know, David Montgomery is another player that could have a breakout season. So um, I'm looking forward to it. And I feel like, you know, the wide receivers I just got, um, it's definitely going to help. And obviously losing Cooper Cup does kind of suck, but uh, I don't know. I mean, getting um, Brandon Cooks, I yeah. mean, like either or. Like, I, I don't know, in that Rams offense, you know, either one could uh, light up the scoreboard pretty quick. Yeah, you got uh, all new running backs. So going forward here, um, I see that right now in your starting lineup, you slot in McCole Hardman to your flex. You have Brandon Cooks as your wide receiver too now, and then David Montgomery as your running back too. Going on McCole Hardman as your flex, is there any cause for concern that uh, he could end up busting like he did week one after playing almost 100% of the team's snaps? I like McCole. Um he was at Georgia. Uh, I think he was our second round pick. I mean, he's a really fast guy, and I feel like you know he's going to fit that offense in Kansas City very well, especially with Patrick Mahomes throwing in the football. I think honestly, it could be a wild card this week. Um, I have him slotted at the flex. I'm still not sure if I'm going to start him. I know Oakland. Um, I don't think they have a very good secondary or defense in general. Just a good team, so I think he could potentially break out. Interesting. So. What makes you slot McCall Hardman over a guy like Michael Gallup, who actually proved week one that he, he belonged on in a lineup? Um, one clear reason, Dak Prescott versus Patrick Mahomes. 
I mean, I know Dak Prescott had a great game, career game last week. But, I mean, come on, man. We're talking about Dak Prescott. And we're also talking about Patrick Mahomes. I mean, you can't really – I mean, you can compare the two, but, I mean, obviously – Mahomes is way more consistent. Just you know what you're getting with Mahomes. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't think, know process. You got anything else from Joe? Um, what about your quarterback, Garrett? Baker Mayfield, tough game in Week One um, against the Titans. Are you keeping him? Are you looking around for other quarterbacks? Maybe make a trade for a quarterback. I know Matt Brem has two very highly sought after quarterbacks. Uh, what are you thinking about doing there? No, I'm going to keep Baker. I like Baker a lot, actually. You know, and uh, they didn't, you know, Cleveland and Baker, like, they didn't, they played uh, decent in the first half. You know, they scored in their opening drive. I feel like, you know, they need to get a little more balance with Nick Chubb, and I feel like that's going to open things up for Odell and obviously Baker. So I'm not really too concerned with the Brown offense to this point yet. Okay. So I think it's fine. Okay. And uh, what do you just, what do you think about the league, uh, league in week one? Do you see anything, uh, that you want to talk about any winners that caught your eye i know chris flickinger had a very impressive week one anything that caught your eye there yeah sammy Watkins. like literally the man was close to 200 yards three touchdowns i mean i thought that was absolutely unreal um yeah i mean literally just patrick mahomes literally just went crazy this week so that, that's just something that caught my eye for sure and on the show we do a segment at the end of the show where we uh me and joe pick our uh, winners for the week and uh, we kind of wanted to do the same thing with you so I'm just going to run down the list here and we're going to see what uh, Garrett Tysinger thinks about this week trophies are nothing versus of course your team Tysinger's boys Ryan Maskin of course a veteran in the fantasy football gridiron football league Um, what do you think goes down in your game today or this week Um, you know I'm looking at Ryan's team right now he's projected to win um, by six points but, you know, I there's some concern I have on his team, um, especially with the quarterback, Kyler Murray. Um, you know, obviously, I, he's a talented guy, but uh, last week he was really playing bad the first half. Um, I mean, that was really bad. I think he had four swatted balls with line of scrimmage. I think that's a problem. So we'll see how it goes with him. Um, he's got Dalvin Cook, who Dalvin Cook's coming off a great game, and first I think he's going to have a great season. So I'm – not really looking forward to facing Dalvin Cook. Um, he's also got Josh Jacobs, who um, he's a rookie, and I'm pretty sure he had a pretty good game uh, last night. Um, he's he's a solid player, looks like. Looks like he's gonna have a pretty good season. And then Julio Jones, you know, um, yeah, Matt Ryan struggled last week. He really did. That whole uh, Falcons offense really didn't play all that well. So I think Julio, especially gets double cover or uh, double team, could definitely be a uh, cause for concern. But also Julio could go. For 300 yards, I mean, uh, so definitely can't discount that. And uh, Deshaun Jackson, you know, with Carson Wentz and that deep ball, I think he got two deep ball passes to touchdowns. That's crazy. You know, got Austin Hooper um, all, along with Atlanta. So, he, I mean, he could potentially break out, have a pretty good game. Derrick Henry, he had a pretty good game last week. So, you know, Musk, got a, he's got a solid squad. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like, you know, I'm going to put up a better fight than I did last week. That's for sure, though. Going back to that Kyler Murray, uh, four swatted passes, I believe you said. Uh, do you believe that going forward the Arizona offense is going to be fixed, or do you think that this is all going to be a work in progress all season long? I think it's going to be a work in progress. I think um, – I, I just – I personally think that Arizona is just not going to potentially have that good of a year. I mean, I think they would be lucky to win five games this year. But um, I know they tied last week, which, you know, ties are extremely gay. The NFL can't do something about that. But, uh, yeah, you know, Kyler Murray, I feel like, you know, he could run for uh, Offensive Player of the Year or uh, Rookie of the Year. So it'll be interesting. It really will. I think week two will be a big week for Kyler Murray. Um, We're just going to see what happens. Yeah, and, of course, Kyler Murray plays Baltimore this week. Tough defense there. Yeah, he gets a lot of hard R points. All right. Um, well, that's a good uh, good breakdown of Ryan's team. If we got nothing else, Taylor, do you have anything else for him? Oh, I'm all good. All right, Garrett, we appreciate you joining us, man. Good luck in your uh, week two matchup. Hopefully you get a nice dub. Hopefully you get over 100 points this week. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Garrett. Later, guys.
All right. That was a great phone call. I appreciate Garrett for coming on uh, to talk to us. Uh, hopefully we'll have a guest every week. I know some people have already told us that they want to be on and it's first come first serve. Uh, and uh, we'll in week two, I think we already got some people lined up, but uh, with that out of the way, we'll, uh, we'll review me and T Quiz's predictions that we gave in the preseason show for week one. Um, we did it pretty good. Actually, we both went five and one, uh, which our scores were a little off. Uh, we didn't realize how high the scoring was going to be, but uh, we got the winners pretty much right. So uh, we'll just review real quick. So the first game that we'll review, uh, I predicted Tequist would win 125 to 107. That is my only mistake on the prediction list. And uh, Taylor, I mean, what? just tell us what happened in your game real quick. Uh, real tough to start out the, the week when uh, you see Sammy Watkins gallop for that 60-yard touchdown and then of course, ends up tacking on two more touchdowns, and it was just, it was a crazy game. That was probably the best game Sammy Watkins will ever play in his career, and then, of course, he paired up Mahomes with that, so, I mean, right there, that's 74 points, so real tough to bounce back from that throughout the week, and then my team, of course, didn't perform up to standards with Goskowski being my <laughs> second highest point scorer with yeah, 16. I just saw that. That's that's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> Man, yeah, that, that Chief duo, that might carry Chris Deal pretty far this in this league i mean it depends how Sammy watkins does obviously i mean but that's pretty potent um, yeah and then going going back to mark ingram too mark ingram was an absolute beast for that ravens team that put up 55 i don't think he can keep up the production getting these limited carries but i mean mark ingram's definitely a, a guy that's gonna be a, a solid guy that has a, a solid floor all right and then uh, go ahead and tell us about your prediction on uh, my game um, so my prediction was that Matt Brim would win 125 to 120. Um, what did you see from this game? Uh, I, I pretty much saw, uh, that Hopkins was of course going to go off for you. I didn't know Damian Williams. I, I thought Damian Williams was going to be bad, but Damian Williams put up 18.5. That touchdown really helped him in his day. But let's talk about this Evan Ingram guy, dude. Yeah. It's like 14 targets for Evan Ingram out of that Giants game. What do you think? Yeah, that that pretty much just twisted the dagger. Um, that game against the Cowboys, that was, I mean, that was tough to see from my end. And he also had the Cardinals Lions game at the same time, and he had like three players in that game, and his score just racked up super quick. And the thing that shot me in the foot was just Cam Newton. That and that was the biggest disappointment that I felt of my team. He just looked really bad. He threw a pick. He lost a fumble. He, I mean, McCaffrey was the entire offense, and McCaffrey put up like 40-something fantasy points, and uh, Cam Newton just could not get the passing game going. He didn't even have, like, he had like one rush, I think, the whole game. So that might be something I'm going to look out for. I might ride him a little bit and see what goes on there, but that really killed me, killed my team. And then for Matt's team, Carson Wentz was just sitting at like two points, fantasy points, like for the entire first half. And then the second half came, and that Eagles offense just like got rejuvenated, and he put up just he kept climbing and climbing and eventually finished with 25 points, and that killed me too. Um, I was really hoping Carson wins because that Eagles team in the first half looked awful; they couldn't do anything. And I was like, "Wow, okay, I might actually have a shot." And then he just he blew up for points, and then Deshaun Jackson obviously did his thing, and yeah, and the, Matt just had a lot, just too much. I couldn't handle it. Uh, but yeah, my biggest disappointments were Cam Newton and Joe Mixon, and Joe Mixon obviously has has departed from my team. But um, that's what happened. Uh, hopefully, I can bounce back. But Matt's team looked pretty good. Uh, so we'll go to our third prediction was uh, the Braden Braden game. So uh, where's this? At? Let me take a look. Oh, here we go. Uh, Braden versus Cole Gibson. This was a uh, this was probably one of the closer matchups. Uh, only finished four point six points difference. Braden coming out on top. My prediction was 131 to 126, so I picked a five-point spread, pretty high scoring. I was actually pretty close in this game with Braden winning, and then you also had Braden winning a little lower, 118 to 112. What did you see from this? Yeah, obviously, Dak Prescott had the game of his career. I mean, this dude looked like a second coming of, of Tom Brady combined with Michael Vick. I mean, this dude was just throwing the ball wherever he wanted to, whomever he wanted, and that was just a very good game for the Cowboys all around. I know it's the Giants, but Dak Prescott's looking to get paid, man. So, I mean, that 33.4 is honestly just the beginning. And then, of course, TJ Hawkinson, the guy that I called out last show that he was going to be a breakout candidate after testing well in the combine, being that first 
first round eighth overall pick for the Lions, and those guys really carried Braden with 58.5 fantasy points. Yeah, uh, yeah, I stand corrected on T.J. Hawkins, and I ripped this dude in that pre- in our preseason show. I just just didn't see it. I mean, it is week one. We'll see what happens throughout the course of the year, but that's very impressive for a tight end. Uh, probably only second to Evan Ingram in points. I, I mean, I keep just took it off the top of my head um, for tight ends, but it's really good. And then Cole, Cole has to feel disappointed. Oh, can't feel too disappointed. He put up 120 points and lost, which is tough. Uh, he only had 120 point score, which I feel like you're going to need more than that to compete in this league with Will Lutz as his third highest score. Um, so we'll see. He'll have to bounce back. He's got a pretty good team. But yeah, Braden just needs to ride this deck, Prescott and TJ Hawkinson duo, and he might go pretty far too. Uh, you want to go ahead and tell us about the, uh, the fourth game? Yeah. Um, let me bring this up real quick. Uh, go ahead and start it here. Okay. Yeah, fourth game we predicted was the Chris Flickinger versus J.P. Salopec game. Uh, we, this is where we split. So I had Chris winning. Taylor had JP winning. So that's J, uh, that's Taylor's only loss for the predictions. He had JP winning 135 to 101, so a blowout win. Um, which was you, you said you got th- 135. You got 137, so you got to score pretty close. I had Chris winning 122 to 104, obviously way low scoring. Um, well, our week two predictions will probably be a little higher. Um, but yeah, I had Chris winning, Taylor had JP winning, and there's our difference there. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? The Dick Tuck's just, I mean, <laughs> 172 points is just ridiculous. His quarterback got 30, his two and three highest scoring players got over 25 each. It was very impressive. Yeah, uh, my concern, though, is this this team's, like we said in the previous show, is a real boomer bust team. I mean, if you take a look at his top three point getters, you got Deshaun Watson, T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen. Like, these guys have a lot of injury history in the past and have shown that they can sometimes be inconsistent at times. So I'd be really excited to uh, looking forward if, if these guys are going to keep up with their production. Yeah. I mean, both of these teams, uh, JP and Chris had Colts skill position players put up a ton of points for them, which I don't think anybody saw happening after the luck retirement. Um, but JP has to feel happy about picking McCaffrey. I mean, this, this dude just looked ridiculous um, against a pretty good defense with the Rams and this I mean he just he was unstoppable 42.9 fantasy points from your running back I think that was probably the third overall pick in the draft um I mean JP put up 137 and lost to the highest scoring team uh this week I mean JP it's JP is 0-1 but he's definitely shouldn't be 0-1 he should he's definitely should be feared in this league he has a really good team yeah no doubt I mean Marlon Mack breaking runs like he's got Andrew Luck still back there, and then Alshon Jeffrey on that high-powered Eagles offense that struggled to get off or struggled at the at the gate, but really found their groove towards the end of the game. Yep. Uh, so we'll move on to the f- uh, fifth game. Uh, we both had Jake Mitchell winning. Uh, I mean, this was we both saw Garrett probably struggling in this game, and he did very much so. Uh, he mentioned that in his phone call. I had Jake winning 122 to 99. Uh, and Taylor had him winning 114 to 106. So we both kind of overestimated Garrett's team. Garrett only put up 66 and a half points. Looking to change that in week two. But um, what, do, what did you see from this game? Yeah, I mean, you, you just can't produce when your highest point getter doesn't even get 15 points. And there was just really uh, he he had a lot of players that were real good floor players. But it's just it's tough to win when all those players actually do hit their floor. Yeah, uh, I mean, his first uh, two picks in the draft were Odell and James Conner, and one of those players is already off his team, um, and Odell only put up 14, yeah. And, I mean, Jake Mitchell, 137 points, very solid performance. Fitz- Larry Fitzgerald is highest-scoring player. Uh, in his last year in the league, Larry, if Larry keeps doing this with Kyler Murray, it's going to be impressive. Um, we'll see if it keeps going. But, yeah, Chris Carson looks to be like a good pick, and Russell Wilson, only 16 points, might be kind of a question mark at quarterback for him. Don't you, don't you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. But I want to I want to talk about this Chris Carson thing. I mean, Chris Carson, Pete Carroll said at the beginning of the season that they were going to feed this man the ball and they were going to include him heavily in the passing game, and they did exactly that. Chris Carson produced on an optimal level, didn't drop any passes, was very good at pass blocking. People were looking for Rashad Penny to uh, take some of these carries away, but Carson honestly just putting his foot to the door and just not letting it happen. Yeah. Uh, very impressive performance from Jake Mitchell. Uh, we'll see if Garrett can break 100 this week. And then our last game, 
that we predicted. We both said Ryan Musk was going to win. We got that right. Uh, we were low scoring. Uh, we only thought it was going to be about a three or four, three point game. I said 115 to 112. Taylor said 117 to 115. Musk, two points away from earning the $5 bonus for the highest scoring team of the week. And uh, all led by Dalvin Cook and Josh Jacobs. That running back tandem that he has is just going to be unstoppable this year. Yeah, look, man, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call him out right now. I mean, we even said it on the show last week, Derrick Henry over Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. If he switched those two players, I mean, he's the, he's getting the $5 this week, and he just didn't listen to us, wanted to play Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders had a good game, but we knew that Derrick Henry train was, was going to be revving. Yeah, I mean, Musk just has to feel like he just left he just left something out there. I mean, he could have five bucks in his hand today. Um, but he just he just couldn't do it. He didn't have the stones to pull off the uh, the flex move, and it cost him. Um, it didn't cost him a win. Uh, I mean, Roger did put up a hell of a fight, though. 136 points is nothing to laugh about. It's a solid performance, led by Austin Eckler with almost 40 points. But uh, Musk, man, you gotta you got sometimes you just gotta take the advice, man. You just gotta listen to your brain, not your heart. But uh, week one was incredible. Good wins, good good games from everybody. Um, and we will move on to our week two predictions. Okay, we're going to start with play that new boss shit, Matt Boss Status versus Chris Deal. Uh, very good matchup, both 1-0. and ESPN has it at a about a six-point clip for in favor of Chris Deal, 122-116. to uh, Matt Bram got his new kicker, Aldrich Rosas now, so I think he's going to keep him. We'll see. Uh, what, what do you, you kind of see out of this, Taylor? Uh, obviously, you got to take a look at the stars here. Uh, Patrick Mahomes definitely powered uh, Chris Deal to a win week one, and then, of course, with Sammy Watkins. Uh, a couple things that I wanted to note, though. I am nervous about the production going forward of LaShawn McCoy here. I slotted as his RB2. Only 10 carries week one. Uh, Average 8.1 yards a carry. So uh, you, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you, you think about slotting him as a starter going forward. But uh, other than that, uh, Vance McDonald still got touch or still got targets, even though the, the Steelers' offense didn't look too, too good. And then... Uh, Allen Robinson, of course, looked really good in that first game. Yeah, the only thing that I see from Matt is, do you think Lamar Jackson or Carson wins? <sighs> it's it's tough because I just there's not a big enough sample size for Lamar Jackson. Uh, he is going against the Cardinals defense, not the best defense, not the worst, a little bit in between. Uh, I would still lean towards Carson Wentz just because that he has that larger sample size. Do you think he should trade one of them while they're at their highest value I, w- I would look to move Lamar Jackson I just I don't trust him uh reminds me of a Walmart brand Michael Vick yeah. from the early uh, 2000s um he just doesn't have the touch that Michael Vick used to have doesn't have the deep ball that Michael Vick had wasn't really running all that much too which kind of limits his fantasy value I would look to move him right now and try to get somebody as like a, a good RB2 since uh, C.J. Anderson has taken carry on Johnson's workload. Interesting. All right, so we'll get right into the scores. I'm going to have I'm gonna have Chris Deal win in this game. I think Chris's team is just too good with the Mahomes and Watkins uh, duo. Uh, I mean, the rest of his players aren't exactly like top tier. I mean, he's got Michael Thomas and Mark Ingram. Those are top tier. But like McCoy, Vance McDonald, Allen Robinson, I mean, those guys are, you know, those are decent fantasy players. But I'm still going to go Chris Deal winning. I'm going to go 140 to 130. Yeah, uh, I'm going to disagree on you with this one. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and Sammy Watkins, I believe they're in a negative game script. I think they're going to blow this. I think they're going to blow the Raiders out of the water, and they're going to be running the ball a little bit more. It's going to boost LaShawn McCoy a little bit, but he this man is rostering three Chiefs players, so... I mean, you got to be careful about doing that. I mean, it worked week one, but who knows if it's going to work week two. And then I really like David Johnson. I like Juju Smith-Schuster to bounce back. Kenny Galladay. He's going to if the if the Lions want to win that week two matchup against the Chargers, they have to throw the ball. They have to get it to Mini Megatron. And then Evan Ingram, of course, was a stud. So I've got Matt Brim winning one twenty nine to one twenty one. All right, let me lock that in. All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Uh, both these teams are really solid teams, both one and zero. So we'll go on to the next one: uh, Garrett Tysinger versus Ryan Muskin. Tysinger's boys versus trophies are nothing. Tysinger's boys zero and one. Ryan one and zero. 
Uh, Ryan's projected to win by about six points, 116 to 110. Uh, they, look, I mean, there's no two ways to say this. Garrett's going to have a tough time with Ryan. I just don't think Garrett's team is on the level, even after those trades. Ryan's team is just really good, almost getting the $5 bonus in week one. Um, I just I, Is there any way that Garrett can p- upset Ryan in this game? He's going to need to look for production out of David Montgomery. Uh, I, I was very high on this guy. I drafted him in the fifth round, moved him after week one for James Conner, of course. But I, I still believe in David Montgomery. I think he's going to be a premier back. It's just whether or not he can get that workload. But in order for Garrett to have any sort of shot, Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham have to play well. David Montgomery has to get the volume. And McCole Hardman played every single snap week one. So uh, he's going to have to get looks. And I just I don't see it. And I, I think that Musk is going to prevail in this game. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I said it in the preseason show. I said having two Brown skill position players on your fantasy team is just, it's a high risk. And I don't think there's that much of a high reward. And then Garrett kind of, Garrett got a little butthurt about it, took it personally. I mean, that's all right. But um, I just, it, it, look, it, it burned him in week one. And I think it's going to burn him throughout the entire year if he keeps it. I don't think Baker Mayfield is a fantasy quarterback, to be honest. I mean, we'll see. Time will tell. But that week one game just was not a good a good sight to see if you're an owner of him. Uh, yeah, I mean, he look, he, he has some rush changes. Obviously, two brand new running backs, a new flex position toy to work with, another Kansas City wide receiver. L- hopefully, he's hoping McCole Hardman can get some touches after the Hill injury. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the players up against Musk's players, I don't think there's any position that you would say, oh, Garrett has that better player. Um Maybe tight end, but that's about it. I mean, what do you agree with that? Yeah, the main thing is here, like, Garrett's team is full of guys that are what-if guys. Like, what if David Montgomery gets that volume? What if McCall Hardman gets those touches or those targets? What if Joe Mixon plays? What if Baker Mayfield finds that rhythm? Like, there's just, what if Michael Gallup can repeat what he did week one? Like, we don't know. There's just so much unknown about Garrett's team and then when you look at Ryan's team like you, you know what you're going to get from Dalvin Cook you're going to get those 20 carries Josh Jacobs 24 carries Julio Jones going to get targets if he plays like this this team's full of guys Derrick Henry he's going to get 20 touches and I, I love Derrick Henry this year I said at week one so this team is just it's just way this team that Garrett has is way too inconsistent for me and I just think that Ryan Muskin wins this game, and I think he wins it convincingly. I have Ryan at 142 and Garrett at 105. Wow, that's that's pretty close to what I th- I think is going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean Musk. I think Musk is going to win this. It's I don't really see any way Garrett can, can win this game unless just ridiculous injuries happen to Ryan's team. Uh, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go 140 to. I mean, I think. Garrett got 66 points last week, and I just don't think he's going to get over 100 again. I said it last week. I gave him 99. I'm going to give him. I'll give him 95. So I'm going to go 140 to 95. Musk. Kind of a blowout, but uh, I mean, Garrett's got to prove prove me wrong before I start giving him more points. So moving on to uh, game three here, uh, we have. Uh, I'll show you my TJ Hawkinson versus the Dick Tucks. Yeah, uh, Braden versus Chris Flickinger, both 1-0. and uh, Both put up pretty good performances. Braden changed his name again, riding that TJ wave. Uh, but yeah, Chris Chris, is, Chris has a good team, man. Uh, we'll see if it lasts. Uh, the AB thing might reduce James White and Josh Gordon. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. I mean, Le'Veon put up a lot of points. Deshaun Watson looks good. Keenan Allen looks good. Delaney Walker looked good. Uh, I'm not a big Delaney Walker guy, but he had some really he had a really nice game uh, week one against Cleveland. Um, but yeah, Braden, ah, uh, Braden's team. Devontae Adams needs to perform for him if he wants to compete. Don't you agree? Yeah, again, enough another tough matchup against Xavier Rhodes this week for Devontae Adams. It's gonna be it's gonna be real tough for him to get it going. Uh, week one, obviously, not the best performance. I, I do want to point out here, Le'Veon Bell. I, I would be the first to admit I was not high on Le'Veon Bell. I didn't think that he was going to get the, the targets. I didn't think that offensive line was going to be good. I, I just didn't think that Le'Veon Bell was going to be per, per, proficient. And you know what? Uh, I was wrong. You were right. You you were high on Le'Veon Bell, and it definitely paid off for uh, the Dick Tucks in week one. Yeah. 
uh, definitely paid off well. I mean, all of his players produced. Literally no one, except maybe the Eagles' defense, was, was like the only one that didn't produce. Um, but Braden's, Braden's team looks good. Uh, let's, I'm going to take a look at his bench. I mean, obviously the Tyree kill injury is like, that's that's a big storyline. You don't know that's how huge. long that dude's going to be out for. I mean, that was his RB1. I think he took him oh, in yeah. the second round, second or third round, probably second. I don't really remember. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, he has to slot in Duke Johnson in his flex now with Julian Edelman as his RB, or as a wide receiver, too. And Duke Johnson really did not have a good uh, good game one, did he? I mean, he only he had nine carries, 13 fantasy points, a couple catches. I mean, I thought he was going to be a little more into that offense than it was, but, I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, Duke Johnson was outshadowed by Carlos Hyde. Yeah. I mean, I thought Carlos Hyde looked 10 times better, and Duke Johnson was assumed to be the starter there. Chiefs, of course, released Carlos Hyde, and he just got inserted into that Houston offense. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my prediction. I'm going to go 135 to 131, Chris. Yeah, this is a tough one for me. Um, You've got definitely some question marks on both sides here. I mean, can T.Y. Hilton produce with Jacoby Brissett? Uh, Can Josh Gordon produce with A.B. there week two? Uh, I personally don't know. But, of course, Braden's got these RB1 and RB2s that it's just it's hard to roster them. I mean, we called Devontae Freeman not being that guy week one. We called Tariq Cohen not really being that much of an impact. I mean, I know he scored uh, 12.9 points, but, I mean, it just it didn't look good. Uh, He was getting outshadowed, in my opinion, by Montgomery and Mike Davis. Um, Devonte Adams got that Xavier Rhodes matchup. <sighs> Julian Edelman in that negative game script. I just, to me, I'm I'm leaning a little bit towards Chris uh, Flickinger here. Uh, I do think this one's going to be a little bit lower scoring. Uh, I just don't like the matchups for both teams, and the inconsistency could be an issue. Uh, I've got Chris Flickinger winning, uh, 118, and then Braden at 112. Wow. So you're going low scoring again, even though even though they both put up over, Chris put up 170 points last week. Yeah, I just I don't see that happening again. There's just there's too many question marks for me. And if you want to keep putting up those high fantasy numbers week in and week out, you got to have players that are consistent. And T. Y. Hilton, Delaney Walker, and James White just aren't the guys for me. Completely agree. All right, next game, J. P. Plays through adversity, coming off a tough loss. Cooper Scooper also coming off a tough loss. Bo- both put up about 135 points. So they might have about very similar teams. ESPN has uh, Roderick as a six point favorite, 126 to 120. Um, quarterback matchups Matt Ryan, man, he struggled week one. The, the, that uh, Falcons offense just could not get going. They lost that game. And uh, I mean, do you expect him to bounce back against the Eagles? Yeah, I mean, that that Vikings defense was tough, man. I mean, I predicted that. I also said that Matt Ryan was going to be the number one fantasy quarterback this year. I just, these dome games, even though he played, this was probably the worst game that he has played and he's going to play this year. Um, but again, he played in that dome stadium and he still got you 18.6 points. So, I mean, going forward, if my quarterback's floor is 18.6 points, like, that's that's definitely my guy going forward. Yeah, and then how about the running back matchup? I mean, two of what arguably were the two consensus number one pick kind of rivals. Like, if you had the number one pick in the draft, would you take McCaffrey or Barkley? They're going up against each other in this game. It's going to be fun. Uh, they both have tough defensive matchups. McCaffrey's got to go up against Sue, Nadama King Sue on the uh, Buccaneers, and Barkley's got to go, go up against a tough Buffalo Bills defense. I mean, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, I mean, Saquon Barkley, of course, is always going to be a stud no matter what. That Buffalo defense, though, is tough against the run, but, I mean, Saquon Barkley is that generational talent and just a guy going forward that you're, you're just always going to be hopeful that he just gets the, the carries, which he didn't get. I didn't think he didn't get enough carries against Dallas week one. So hopefully going forward he gets that 20 to 25 carries and that 8 to 10 catches because they really need to get him involved. And I'm looking at these defenses. They both have the defenses in the same games with ridiculous offenses. JP's playing the Rams defense against the Saints, and Rodgers playing the Saints defense against the Rams. So, I mean, you've got to expect a change here, right? Yeah, I mean, the Saints got gashed week one uh, against the Texans, and it just it didn't look very good. Um, going forward, you have, to, you have to think about if they're actually going to be that playable defense. I mean, 
The Rams offense, of course, one of the league's best. Didn't Garrett Goff did not play good week one, but still, like, they're always the threat to put up 30 to 40 points, and you, you just can't play the Saints here. I just think they're unplayable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think both of these defenses are unplayable this week, honestly. Uh, just Both offenses are just way too, just way, have way too high of ceilings. Um, that game could be just ridiculous scoring, just a, it, just like a Big 12 game, honestly. Um, but yeah, we expect some changes here. Um, neither of them have a bench defense, so expect for them to go on the waiver wire uh, on the 11th on Wednesday, and uh, we'll see. Uh, so do you want to go ahead and give your prediction first? Yeah, so two, two teams that scored a, a pretty good amount of points last week. Um, I've said this, and I'll always stick with this. Matt Ryan's my guy. Saquon Barkley going to get the workload. Um, Eckler, he's gotten, he's getting volume too. I mean, if you look from the top down, other than D.D. Westbrook, uh, Roderick is definitely has a team that has guys that are full of volume potential, which I like uh, week in and week out. But I, J.P.'s team, man, I mean – he had a he had a tough loss, scored that 137 point game, I believe, and and just lost to Chris Flick. Like, I think JP's team bounces back. I think Roethlisberger does well than what he did week one. McCaffrey gonna do McCaffrey things. Evans gonna get his head out of his ass. Like, there's just a lot of things to look forward to, and he still scored 137 points. Like, I I think JP's gonna win this game. I think JP wins it convincingly. I have JP winning 142 to Roderick's 129. All right. Uh, I have it a little different. I think Roderick's going to pull this one out. I think it's going to be super close. I think it's going to be another like one thirties game. I'm going to go. I'm going to go one thirty four to one thirty two, Roderick. Um, but yeah, this game I think is probably the closest one um, that I see in week two. Uh, I think either of these teams could win. Um, it's yeah. I mean, one of them's going to be zero and two, and it's, they're both. The one of them's going to be zero and two. And that team is going to be a really good team. So, yeah, and it just kind of sucks they got these matchups first uh, first two weeks. Um, so the last two games are our games, me and Taylor's. So we will do, Taylor, your game first. So you're going up against Jake Mitchell. What do you see out of his team? Uh, Jake Mitchell obviously uh, had a really good game week one. Obviously got the dub. And uh, going forward, I mean, you, you've got guys you can rely on here. Uh, Tom Brady and uh, you definitely have uh, Larry Fitz that I think is really gelling well with Kyler Murray. There's a ton of question marks surrounding Jake's team, though. I mean, you've got Todd Gurley, who almost lost the carries battle to uh, Brown there in, at the, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, Chris Carson's going to be a good play, no doubt. How is Antonio Brown going to be a factor there? I just I don't see it. I think he's a cancer in the locker room. Uh, he's just, I know he's great. He's obviously one of the best talents around, but the Patriots built their, their dynasty on unselfishness. They, they built it around winning championships, no divas. Uh, even Randy Moss put all that aside back in the day. And I just, I don't see Antonio Brown doing that. I personally don't think this lasts. I think Antonio Brown will be cut, but as of now, I just there's too many question marks. It's it's definitely tough to slot Antonio Brown in as a starter here. I just I, I don't see the production happening. Yeah, I agree. I think if I'm Jake Mitchell, I think I ride the Antonio Brown way for about one game against Miami. I think he's gonna put up points in this game against Miami, and I think you flip him while his value's the highest. I just yeah, I don't see him just doing it the whole year. I mean, Tom Brady could work his his TB12 magic on him and just like make him the like the biggest players player ever. Um, but I mean that's gonna be ridiculous if that happens but yeah a lot of new england players have been rostered in fantasy a lot um, yeah and i and i don't understand that like it, it just doesn't make any sense to me like they spread the ball around and you don't know what you're gonna get like if the patriots know that they can gash you running the ball tom brady's only gonna throw for 180 yards and a touchdown if they know they can throw the ball your running backs aren't gonna be good so for fantasy you want a team that's consistent especially when you have a three-week playoff where if you lose one of those weeks you're done and it showed uh, with teams in the past, like Ryan Muskin's team, that it's just hard to get it done in the playoffs when you don't have that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you said it, you said it exactly right. Um, now we see you do not have a defense and no defense on your bench. You got two empty bench spots and an empty defense. So I'm guessing you're going to be making some waiver pickups, three probably. Um, do you want to tell us about what you're thinking, or you want to keep that completely completely out of it? 
I'm going to keep this on the down low for now, but I, I will say this. I have six waiver claims up, and a, a ton of my money is going to be gone at the end of uh, uh, the waiver wire period. And I just there's there's a couple guys that I really like that I really want on this team, so I wanted, I wanted to spend up for them. And uh, I just wanted to go back and say one thing real quick. Um, I was getting a lot of hate for this uh, in the Week 1 podcast. I said Zach Ertz wasn't going to produce – now, I was I was getting so much hate for this, but again, this is this is what happens when you think outside the box. Zach Ertz, five catches, fifty four yards. This guy was going in the second to third round in fantasy drafts, and you're you're getting ten point eight points out of him week one. Eagles Eagles struggle in the first half. I'll I'll say that right now. But what happened in the second half? They they hit a surge, and that, where was Zach Ertz? He was nowhere to be found. And I just want to say like. I, I was right about this one, and anybody that said anything to me, like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I won this one. Yeah, Jake Mitchell's team is about the riskiest team, I think, in the league. I mean, apart from Chris Carson and Justin Tucker, everybody else on his team, I would say, is just, it's very risky. I mean, Todd Gurley did not look comfortable in that first game against the Panthers. Antonio Brown is Antonio Brown. Calvin Ridley is, I mean, he's maybe a number two in that offense. The offense didn't look great. Julio couldn't even really produce. Zach Ertz, you just talked about it. Fitzgerald, rookie quarterback, super old, last year in the league. I mean, it's just a lot of risks. And I don't think there's that much upside, honestly, in the risks. So his bench his bench isn't really that great either. I mean, Tevin Coleman's out. Golden's, Golden Tate's suspended. We'll be coming back. Um, C.J. Anderson's a little valuable, I think, in that Detroit offense. But it's it's going to be, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what, what happens, but I think it's the riskiest. And my prediction, I'm going to go Taylor wins this. I'm going to go 122 to 116. I think Taylor breaks the triple digits barrier. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say one more thing about my team. Um, definitely a big pickup here getting Connor. Uh, I can definitely slot Fournette into that flex spot and be comfortable with my flex going forward. I mean, that's a guy that could easily – top the 30 point marker and week in and week out as long as he gets the carries and as long as the game flow you know is is positive for running backs and i really like how i have that three-headed monster of zeke james connor and fournette so are going you, forward are you worried about fournette with gardner Minshew now uh gardner Minshew looked really good like i said earlier 22 for 25 and he was throwing the ball downfield he was making Shark, he was making uh, just uh, Chris Conley. He was making all these guys look like they were fucking Calvin Johnson, Randy Moss, and fucking I don't even know, like Larry Fitzgerald in his prime. Like he was, he was making all these guys look good. They all had great fantasy weeks. If he can keep this up, Fournette is going to have a big year as long as he can stay on the field. I really like how I got Cooper Cup here, that number one pl- uh, wide receiver in that Rams offense. I think I made a lot of positive upgrades, in my opinion. All right, we'll see what happens. And uh, the last game is my team versus Half Chub Cole Gibson. Uh, just real quick, I'm, I'll go through Cole's team. What I think. I mean, his team is really—it's kind of scary, honestly. It looks—it looks really good on paper. I mean, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Rodgers, Nick Chubb, Travis Kelsey. Uh, Bears defense, Will Lutz. I mean, these guys are solid fantasy players. Um, I think his wide receiver core is really weak, especially as the season goes on when A.J. Green comes back, when we see the true Andy Dalton. Uh, I mean, that division the Bengals have to play in has just really good defenses. And then D.J. Moore, I mean, I just I don't see D.J. Moore producing long-term in fantasy. Um, but other than those two players, I think his team is really good. Yeah, a lot of concerns here for that Cleveland offense, of course. Uh, that offensive line was atrocious. Baker Mayfield didn't have any time to throw. He was pressured on a lot of plays. Nick Chubb, uh, he just wasn't putting up that first-round pick status, that early second-round pick status numbers. I mean, 11.5 in Week 1. Uh, of course, you're going to get production out of Alvin Kamara. Aaron Rodgers is only going to get better. Uh, my concerns here is Tyler Board, DJ Moore, I know – they did good week one, but I just want to hold the bandwagon here. Like, these guys are not good receivers. I'm going to tell you right now, these guys, skill-wise, are not top-tier receivers. They do not belong as wide receiver one, wide receiver two on any team. Marvin Jones Jr., who is the flex right now, deserves to go ahead of them in pure skill. It's just it's really hard to win a fantasy season when you don't have any good wide receivers to rely on. Yeah, um, I agree. And then obviously I made the Aaron Jones pickup with the trade with Garrett. 
Uh, and then Gus Edwards is on my bench, deep bench player. But, uh, yeah, I gave away Marquise Brown. Uh, I thought his value was the highest right now. Uh, after putting up that point, that uh, amazing game against my, the Dolphins, I just don't think that Ravens offense is going to do that every week. I think the Dolphins are extremely bad at football this year. Uh, I don't know if they'll win a game, to be honest. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, he's my RB2 now. Him and Damian Williams are going to tandem that up. <clears throat> I put Tyro Williams in my flex. I just, Tyler Lockett... I, I don't know. I mean, I really don't even know what to say. He had one catch for a touchdown, 44 yards. Um, and that was in, like, the fourth quarter. He only got he barely got targeted. DK Metcalf looks to be the guy on that team, wide receiver-wise, which sucks for me, I guess. But uh, Tyrell Williams, he kind of impressed me. I know it's Derek Carr, but um, I don't know. I think Tyrell Williams is, has a high ceiling. That's That's my thought process. Yeah, obviously the strength of your team here is DeAndre Hopkins and Robert Woods. Those are definitely going to be staple points in your team throughout the year. Uh, picked up Aaron Jones. I just wanted to ask what you saw in Aaron Jones that made you want to trade for him. Um, I was eyeing him before the draft. Uh, I remember my third-round pick. I was debating between Damon Williams and Aaron Jones. I went with Williams. And then Joe Mixon, I just I didn't really want him to begin with, but he was kind of on the draft board in the second round. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he was probably the best option. But when I, I watched that Bengals game, and I just did not like what I saw from that Bengals offense. They just didn't really run the ball at all. Um, and then Andy Dalton just, I mean, he looked all right. I just don't think that offense is going to be that good. I know they have a new coach with a new offensive scheme, but I'm just kind of selling I'm just selling Joe Mixon. And plus, he kind of got injured. I don't know how long he's going to be out. I like Aaron Jones. I like having an, a Green Bay player. I think that always has a high, high floor. Um and I don't know. It was more about not liking Joe Mixon than liking Aaron Jones. Yeah, obviously my major concerns here is Damian Williams almost splitting 50-50 with McCoy out of the backfield for carries. I know Williams had those six catches, but how, how often is he going to be able to sustain those catches is a big question mark. Aaron Jones, of course, in that pass-first offense, uh, they're only going to get better. I look for him to get 15 to 20 carries a week. It, I mean, this guy is talented. Uh, we've seen it on the field. They wouldn't give him the ball if he wasn't. And I, I think he's going to hold off uh, the the backup running back there, Jamal Williams. And uh, Cam Newton, man, he's got to start producing. I mean, that was an awful week one performance. I just, I just didn't think that he like, knew what he was doing. I think that shoulder's still bothering him. Something's going on there. Uh, if this happens again week two, you got to look to move on from him, in my opinion, and maybe go to the waiver wire or even a, another trade here. But uh, going to my prediction, I have uh, uh, half Chubb winning here. Um, I just think he's got too many players that are too, too consistent. Rodgers, Kamara, Kelsey, these guys are really going to power him through. There's just too many question marks surrounding your team right now, in my opinion. Um, again, Tyler Boyd and DJ Moore are not good wide receivers, but when you have Kelsey, Rodgers, and Kamara as a three-headed monster, it's going to be tough to beat. Uh, I have this as a, a middle-scoring game. I, I have uh, half Chubb winning 138 to uh, your team at 129. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so cool. All right, uh, those are our predictions for week two. Uh, I think that is going to be the show for this week. I don't think we got anything left to do. Um, again, we're going to try to have a, uh, a guest phone call uh, each week. I know JP's expressed interest. I know we're going to try to have the commissioner on a couple times. Um, and then we'll obviously we'll see if any, uh, any off-season controversies happen. Uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like there could be something this year. we got a lot of uh, sketchy people in this league. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, that's the Troll and Quiz Show for week two. We will see you next week for week three. Thanks, guys. See you guys.